Our first order of business before we start on the mesh is to make sure that every element within our part has the correct assignment of material. You can control click on objects to select more at once. So for the water, obviously we want it to be water. So, and so on. Now that we have assigned the material to our bodies, we want to create a mesh. Now we know that there are small and very large parts. If we try to do a normal mesh, this will create a lot of conflict within uh, the meshing protocol. So we are going to use a property called multi-zone. Go to method and select all of the bodies and apply. The method that we are using is multi-zone. This tells the mesher that there are many small and large bodies and to use different meshes for each of them. So if we click on update, we can see how that works. So clicking on the mesh, we can see that on the macroscopic view, it looks fairly regular. Let us look at the platinum and silicon dioxide layers though. So first, we will hide the water so that we can see the mesh on the inside. View it face on and zoom in onto the tab. We can see that there are large elements and small elements. However, we notice that this mesh is rather coarse. So we want to refine it. But we also know that a lot of the body does not need to be meshed. This border of the silicon and this side of the water, which I will show, and this side of the water are far from the area of interest, which is right along this line. So we can have rather large elements here, but we want rather small elements down here. So let us get to it. By clicking on sizing and selecting the edges of, say, the water, we can define how many elements that we want on the water. Let us go with 15. Now, in order to make one side larger than the other, we will assign a bias. Bias can be either ascending from one side to the other, descending from one side to the other, centered in the middle, or centered around the edges. Let us choose this one and hope that it goes towards the center of the object. Let's say a bias factor of 60. The bias factor tells you how, how much the element sizes will change per element. A large bias factor will create a large gradient, whereas a small bias factor will create a very small gradient. Let's go back to the large bias factor. As we can see, we did select correctly the small, the small elements are near this center, while the large elements are here. So let us see how this changes the mesh. Opening up the mesh, we can see that indeed there are large elements here and small elements here. I will now do the exact same with the silicon. I now have both the water and the silicon meshed so that it is centered along the center line. So let us hide those two objects. And focus on the platinum and silicon dioxide. Having hidden all of the Having hidden the water interiors, silicon, and water, we are now looking only at the platinum and the silicon dioxide. 
we know that most of the area of interest is around here. So zooming in, we can see that there are only three elements. This is bad. The less elements you have, the more likely that your solution is going to be inaccurate. So let us zoom in, select sizing of the edges, and select, there we go. Make sure to select all three on the top and all three on the bottom so that we have six edges selected. And let us have a number divisions of say 25. Updating the mesh, we now see that there are 25 elements. We notice that there's a huge element here. This is again very bad because we suspect that this area is going to be important. So again, let us go to sizing. So let's look at the edges of the top. We must zoom in enough to see that we have all three planes. Select the three planes and the edge and apply it. Since this area is going to be of interest, we suspect that the other corner will not be too interesting. So we can have smaller edges here and larger edges at the edge. So let's put 30 with a bias of say 50. Now if you notice the little golden demarkers get smaller on the vertical but smaller this way on the horizontal. This means that we cannot combine these edge sizings together. So let us duplicate this edge sizing and separate them so that they have the correct bias direction. This one we will select the three edges of the vertical bar and they will be moving that direction. On the horizontal direction, we will select the three horizontal bars and swap the bias direction so that the small elements are in this corner. Now we will generate the mesh. And we can see that there are very small elements here and large elements at this corner. Let us view all of the objects. There, we have a pretty complex mesh. This ends the meshing tutorial.